What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Crazy Face Who Know Podcast. I'm your host, Shane McNeely. Just a reminder, Crazy Face Who Know is inspiring others to do good, make a difference in our local and global community. And it is my honor today to introduce to you Grace Paul. Welcome, Grace. Hello. Grace is joining us from Indiana via the phone. Uh, Grace is my youngest cousin. Yeah. Grace, you have two older sisters. Yep, they're twins. The twins, Jesse and Jackie. Yep. Five years older. Five years older. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. And you are, you've graduated high school. Yep, you I are. am on my way to graduate with a psychology degree, bachelor's degree. Nice, nice. And let's see, you've got a few different little hobbies, right? Yep, we um, are, we do truck shows, so our truck is probably our first hobby. Yep. Um, our dog is like our child, so <laughs> there's that. We very much bonded um, over the fact that our dogs are, are like our children. Yes, because we don't have children. It's so. true, it's true. And um, Chance is, is obviously here. He's laying on the floor. He, uh, yeah. I shut the door because I knew Remy would be bugging me and definitely squeaking <laughs> his toys at me. So I was like, you can go outside for a minute. Yeah, and you're joining <laughs> us uh, kind of on your, I don't know what other way to say it, but kind of like your little lunch break almost. You have to be back yep. at work in a couple hours. Um, yeah. And you're squeezing it in. And I really appreciate that. Thanks for being here with us. Of course. Um, so outside of dog, uh, and trucks and kind of working on trucks and your, your vehicles, any other hobbies or things you enjoy? Um, I really like to, I'm a caregiver, obviously, and yeah. much like, um, Diane Ingle, she was on here, and Della Paul, yep. that's my grandma. My mom and my um, grandma, yep. Yep, and we're all caregivers and we're all fixers, we all have that in common, so... Yeah, definitely. That's definitely. family is family is uh, probably one of our um, strongest thing, like strongest connections. Really is. Yeah, absolutely. We have. Um, I'm very very close with my aunt Diane, which is Shane's mom. And, yep. Yep. Um. Yeah. So we're really close, and we've gotten really close here lately too. So. Yeah. Family's a big thing for us. Absolutely. Absolutely, and Grace, you you're currently working. Uh, what's the what's the what's your job title? I guess. Um, I am like a server at a assisted living home, and here in Rochester, it's called Winfield Crossing. Yeah. So I serve the residents, and I mean, a lot of it. It's not just. I mean, you say you're a server, but right. when you work with older people, it's a lot more than just serving <laughs> them. It's taking care of them. And Absolutely. But I love older people. <laughs> that's like my, that's where I need it. I'm an old soul, so. Absolutely. And Definitely. it kind of speaks to your caregiving and also kind of speaks to your major psychology and yep. your, the future, kind of like where you kind of want to see your life go at this point in time. Yeah. Um, go ahead and would you tell us kind of about what you envision your life after you get your bachelor's degree and kind of what the future might hold for you? Yeah. So, um, I'm looking at probably getting, I'm getting my master's. I just haven't decided whether I'm doing clinical or counseling. Right. Um, I'm mostly looking into like my absolute dream job would be to work alongside Alzheimer's patients or dementia patients Yeah. and, um, counsel them and their families. Um, because a lot of it isn't counseling for the necessarily the patient themselves, but helping their families cope with the transition and being able to talk. I think that families, this is where families fall apart is when a loved one gets sick and, you know, we have, there's all these changes and we're yeah. trying to cope and no one's talking to each other. And yeah. so that's really where my heart lies is counseling with the families of dementia patients, because I will, 
I love older people and that's where my that's mm-hmm. where my love lies. So Well and we have you and I and and have, you know, first hand um experience in some ways with this with, with our yes. grandpa. Um who And is... that's where that's where it's um now I'm realizing more and more how how essential this is. How essential yeah. this that therapy, that counseling could be for families going through this is more and more now that we're seeing this with our own grandfather. Yeah. You it's it's honestly essential because when times are tough and everything feels like it's you know, you're seeing your loved one go yeah. through that, you need you need someone to talk to more than ever. Yeah. And it, and and that support just yeah. knowing it's there sometimes is is so huge. I saw it when I was a caregiver um, you know, when I first moved to the Twin Cities in, in Minneapolis and mm-hmm. I saw it with the families there. I mean, we were caregivers for um, you know, our clients and, and our elderly right. seniors that had dementia and Alzheimer's. But, you know, when the family stopped in and the family was there that was taken care of so often those conversations uh came about and just kind of some of their struggles and just being available to talk I think was just huge. So um yeah, I definitely, I second that that is a need that is definitely um, crucial for people that are experiencing, you know, a family member, a loved one that's going through that. So that's really cool. I, I'm excited for you. I think that as we continue to talk, your story is really going to um, make sense to a lot of people. I think it's going to really resonate with a lot of people um, that have gone through, you know, maybe some of the the challenges of just life in general um, right. and, and, and loving where, your family. And yeah. that's where we, Shane and I had previous conversations about the, um, just it's my, if my story could help anyone, like that's where, that's where I'm at. And, um, if my, you know, I'm, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter. Yeah. And always posting, like, it's okay to not be okay. Like, if, you know, someone sees that and you you just help them that one day. Yeah. Get through that one day. That's that's more than enough to be satisfied with, I feel like, in life, is if you help someone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we definitely have that in common because that's, that's what I want to do, too. Uh, I want to help people. And, you know, there's different specialties or different areas of life that we can all help people and sometimes just helping people um it seems like this grandiose thing but it doesn't have to be and it doesn't need to be right the simple it's okay to not be okay or the simple smile the simple thank you the simple uh you know gift of gratitude or appreciation to someone is is huge and can make the biggest difference in someone's life. And I'm sure you see that at, you know, the assisted living place that you work in. Sometimes just the gratitude of something simple that an, a, a person, a human being needs and, and wants and needs help with and, and just helping with. Yeah, and you see that more. You see it as I feel like as, as we are young, we don't see it as much in ourselves that we need all this care. We don't need that. But yeah. as you get older, you become so you're lonesome you you know you're you're like you know what's coming with your life and you see it more I see it more and more in my line of work and just a simple smiling face and you know like always being cheerful that means the world to them and making sure that they feel like their needs are met and that you have cared for them a hug you don't know what a hug means to them yep yep Exactly. And that's just, I, it's not the big, it's not the big gestures in life that mean the most. It's the hug or how are you doing and staying yeah. in touch. That's what means the most. Yep. It's a uh, love as the core yep. and, and just kind of sharing that love in whatever way that looks. And um, yeah, that's really beautiful. You've kind of t- touched on it. I don't think that it's going to be much of a shocker here. Uh, with what you're going to say, but I want to ask the question, why counseling? Um, I have went through counseling myself for, um, I did counseling when I, my parents first got a divorce, um, Mm kind of got away from it for, I mean, that was just, 
I think that that was something that families did at the time when something like that happened. You did that for your kids. Yeah, and that was your first introduction to, you know, counseling right. or therapy. And it wasn't, it's not that it was a bad experience with counseling. It was just that set the tone for me to know that we need good counselors. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I went to, um, a state funded counseling center nothing wrong with that um it was just un uneducated okay i think and that was where when i finally as i think i was uh, started again in middle school when yeah. i realized that i had anxiety yeah and um started seeing a therapist then yeah and that was when i I really realized that therapy is so crucial, whether you have anything wrong with you or not. Yeah. Therapy is so crucial. And just having someone to talk to. Yeah. And that meets that, it meets a need. Absolutely. And um, that's where I kind of, I had a very amazing counselor, Pam Watterson here, and she's out of Logansport. Okay. And, um, she works at the hospital and she, she really set the tone for a good counselor. Yeah. And she made me realize that that's what I wanted to do with my life. That she, I saw, she was talking to me about it and the, about how I have a big heart and, you know, I could really help some people. And I was like, yeah. after that conversation, I knew like that was what I wanted to do and not many people can say that yeah absolutely that's cool I the common theme of just people that I have on this podcast is um just the big heart the empathetic heart and Mm -hmm. I see that so much in you you like it's really cool I feel okay I feel like our conversation on my way down to Florida Mm-hmm. has really opened the door for you and I and our relationship and and our friendship. I'm so much older than you and I always have been and it's just hard to relate to people sometimes until it, there's like a separation, you know, like always thinking of you right. as a kid or always thinking of you mm-hmm. as this little girl and right. um you know, we don't we've not lived in the same state for a really long time and since you were really tiny and it's just kind of kind of cool to see how we've been able to stay in touch just in the it's been what two weeks <laughs> yeah. um but really to see you as a young woman that's growing and maturing and trying to figure out life and i i recognize so many of the things that you're going through now that I've experienced in some ways in my life. And, um, I really appreciate again, you being on here. One of the things that we really wanted to focus on that you've talked about is mental health. And you've touched on this a little bit. I obviously want to tell your story. I want you to tell your story, um, in whatever capacity or whatever way you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's go back. You, you mentioned it, I mentioned, you know, like the beginning of when you first entered, were introduced to counseling, but mm-hmm. um, your parents' divorce has really been one of the beginnings. So it'd be my uncle, um, Uncle Stephen. That that's my my mom's brother, and then mm-hmm. your mom, Tammy. Yes. And, and when they went through this divorce, um, I think it's really where maybe the beginning of your story that we could start to tell. Um, yeah. So whatever you want to kind of start off with or kind of um, get into your so, story a little bit. Yeah. So um, I remember, I think I was in first grade, if I am remembering correctly. And I just, we, I just knew that we weren't, they weren't living together anymore or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it was never talked about, you mm-hmm. know, um, it was, I think it was talked about to my older sisters because sure. they were older. Yeah. And so, um, I, like, I didn't understand because I, I was a younger, but I think if that would have been, um, discussed with me, you know, or 
maybe had a conversation about it and maybe there was and i just i don't remember sure but i think that that was when i kind of felt like um so my whole anxiety and depression basically my fault is i am not good enough or i am a disappointment of some sort that's kind and of the thing that you tell yourself or the thing that kind of that's yes repeats. that is like the main like the center of my anxiety yeah. or like you know you beat yourself up and we all i we've talked about this and we both we both go through that and yeah um i think a lot of people do yes and i think that this world is very it's very hard and cruel and we ha- live in such a cruel world and you you feel like you have to meet these milestones and you have to do this and you have to do that yeah and so when you don't reach these goals and you're just one step behind. It's like, wow, you're a failure, you know, mm-hmm. because you didn't, you did not do that in this certain amount of time, yeah. or you didn't do that, or you couldn't do that. And it's, so, it's crazy um, how we put those pressures on ourselves, though, because yeah. I don't think that. I mean, it's so easy to say, and it's so easy to see. It's harder to put into practice because. I look at that and I'm like, just take your time, take it one day at a time, you know, but I do the same thing to myself. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's a weird battle or this weird, like give and take. Right. Um, Yeah. And and you can know the, the right answer and know the difference. This is at least for me, like I, there's so many times that I, I hear these like negative self-talk or this negative talk in my head, Mm -hmm. but it's one thing to hear it and know the response or know the correct answer but to actually like accept it or Mm -hmm. to. And it's not that um, the pressure lies within us. It's not necessarily society, but it is society because we have been, we have been conditioned to who we are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of it is learned behavior Yep. or, And so it's just that that's how I I heard that. You know what I mean? Like, that's not just something that just popped up in my head randomly. Sure. That was something that, you know, as a child, you, you know, you got to get better grades. You got to do better in sports, you know. And so I think that that's when children start to develop these you know, I got to be this, I have to be this, I, I need to get this done in a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And we put these pressures on ourselves, and then it's conditioned. And now we're here, we're, we're adults. And we're like, dang, you know, I should, I should have <laughs> had that done already, or yeah. I should be this, or I should be that. And um, it's so much the perspective of it, though, you know, yeah, um, because I, I don't know that other people I think people do it unintentionally, mm-hmm. but I don't think that people really, like, I don't look at, Grace, can I tell your age? Is that okay? Yeah. You're 19? Yep. 19. You are really close due to some other, some difficulties that you're having um, in part of this. Like, you were ready to graduate next year, within the year. Yep. And... So I I just I say that because you're almost 20 years old. You're not even 20 yet and you almost have a bachelor's degree, which is way ahead of the curve. So give yourself a little grace. Yeah. <laughs> um but like yeah, no I pun mean pun intended, right? No pun intended <laughs> or pun intended either way. Um but no, like it's just funny how I can hear you say these things, but I also know like man, you're you're ahead of the curve and you're doing so well. Like you really are. There's no timetable. And, yeah. But, and you know, I'm very great. I'm, I am grateful that I have been, I have pushed myself. I'm grateful for that. I'm, and I'm grateful for the compliments mm-hmm. and I'm grateful for the, I'm grateful for the things in life. Um, it's just, you know, like we said, it's like that little devil sitting on your shoulder saying, yeah. come on, 
what are you gonna do yeah when are you gonna make your move yeah yeah for sure for sure um so your parents um yeah your parents went through this divorce yeah um, and i think i kind of thought that that was not necessarily my fault but you're searching for answers as a a young girl yeah And, and um then uh my sisters they were getting they were uh, let's see they were in middle school mm-hmm. when this happened i believe because i used to i used to like panic like that i i had to see them because i i miss them yeah like it was like this panic and um the girls really sorry i don't want to get emotional but <laughs> no, it's it's totally okay. The girls really took care of me. Yeah. During those times. Yeah. And um sorry. No, oh, you're okay. They were um so like they were the best things that could have been, you know, having those older sisters were the best things that I could have ever asked for. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, the you know to speak back to just some of the importance of family to you and I, and um, you know, and I, I don't, I want to. Obviously, we're having a very uh, vulnerable conversation. Right, right. Um, and we're talking about how important your sisters were and important that they are, and I think it's important to state like you have a good relationship with your mom now. And, yes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I know that. Thanks. Fam- family you is know, important. Family is has been very. important, and you love your family. You love your mom. You love your dad. You love your sisters. You love you love our family very much. And so, I want to make sure that that's out there. Right. Um, that There's we're not beating nothing. up on people. We're not. Right. <laughs> we're just Correct. telling the story, and and the from your perspective. Um, and the um, the the whole concept of my story is. The anxiety and depression that I now face, I mean, daily. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a fight for me more mm-hmm. than anything. Yeah. And so, um, I think that the being disappointed in myself or not being good enough stems from, like, the divorce and just certain things that, you know, like my my father not always wanting having not always wanting to have something to do with me and stuff like that leads to the anxiety and the depression Mm -hmm. and I could actually tell you the exact time I realized that I had anxiety because I had a and this is where I know that I can't be told that I'm a disappointment because it sends me into a panic attack yeah. That's um the word disappointment is really I can say it myself but it's a really hard thing to hear from others. Yeah. And um I had a basketball coach. We ate this is the stupidest thing, but we actually we were having a pizza party or something. And we ate the pizza before he got into the room. And um, he came in and he was so mad at us, so mad at us. And he said, you all are a disappointment to me. And then that, that right there. And I looked up to this coach so much because mm-hmm. basketball, I mean, that basketball had been such a big part of my life when I was younger. And so that sent me into a full-blown panic attack. I mean, (laughs) it was insane. And I had never, never had a panic attack like that that I could ever remember. Yeah. And I I couldn't, it was just so heavy. I thought I was going to pass out. Yeah. And all the other girls were just like, why are you, why is this so upsetting to you? Yeah. And it took me a long, long, (laughs) it took me a long time to figure it out. But that being a disappointment, that just killed me. Yeah. That just, 
you know, that is what I could not live with being a. Mm. And I could, that is the day that they had to actually call my mom, <laughs> call my mom to the school. Yeah. Um, because I couldn't get calmed down. Yeah. And then I went to my pediatrician and he was like, I think that you have anxiety. This is, yeah. This is a, pa- I think that this was a panic attack. I think that you have anxiety and you, I never once thought about anxiety. Right. I or really like understand total, what it means. I mean, yeah, I, I was in total shock because I was like, how can I have anxiety? Yeah. How could that? I'm a kid. Right. How does that happen? Mm-hmm. And um, then I was prescribed my first antidepressant, and I think I, w- I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. My first antidepressant. Yeah. So that right there was when I started to realize, like, this this problem is bigger than me. Yeah. Um, and maybe started and, your exploration a little bit, yeah. you know, of talking with people and kind of figuring out, like, what are the root causes so and understanding. Oh, I yeah, was so sure. embarrassed. Yeah. I just thought, why, does I, why do I have to be any more different than yeah. I already am? I mean, I... I've never been like a small girl, obviously. I've never been, I've, you know, I've always been different. And I thought, good Lord, how can I be more different? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. In a, in a world where you just wanted to Fit have in. value and yeah. be, be valued and, and have a, be appreciated, be loved. And, um, you now had one other thing that kind of set yourself apart from everyone else. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I can relate to that too. I mean, my it, it's funny as I've gotten older, um, one of the things that I remember as a kid, so full disclosure, I, I've talked about it, how I plan to and I want to, uh, but I haven't. Um, I haven't been to a therapist. I haven't talked to anybody. Um, it's something that I want to do. It's something I plan to do. Um, I'm sure that I will talk to you all more about it once I do. Um, however, I wanted to maybe just tell one of the first things that I remember that I look back now and I go, oh, this was my anxiety. I would multiple times. I don't, I was, I had to have been, you know, it would have probably been like second, third, fourth grade, maybe a little older than that. Somewhere between like probably second and <laughs> uh, fifth grade, I would suppose. Mm-hmm would be when I remember I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd be like, oh, I didn't do my homework or I forgot to do this one sheet, you know, or this one worksheet or whatever I need to do. And I would be in this like full blown, like anxiety attack in some ways where my heart's beating really fast and I'm like Mm -hmm. freaking out and I'm laying there and I had to just turn on the light and my, it was, I, I know that there was multiple times that it happened and it was generally between like three and 4 a.m. And I'd mm-hmm. wake up and I'd have to do that. Like I'd just get the worksheet done and I'd lay back down and go back to sleep. Um, or sometimes I'd fall asleep like trying to do my <laughs> do that last little bit of my work or whatever. Um, but I just remember that heart racing, panic feeling. Um, uh, it was just, it was terrible. But that's one of my first recollections, recollections of like anxiety. And I think anxiety. that people will, will always... I. Th- I think you'll always remember, you know, like that, that for me has stuck out. So, I mean, since when I went to the doctor that day and I, that has stuck out to me more than, Mm -hmm. you know, the, than the overcoming some of my anxiety. It, that right there is like, I could not, I just could not believe that, you know, something so so not not a big deal to others Mm -hmm. made me just flip out (laughs) yeah yeah it was insane and i think that those are the things that you'll remember and you'll look back on and yeah definitely that's like that's the main part like big part of my story you know is Mm -hmm. i remember that day very vividly i remember I could honestly probably tell you the piece of pizza I was eating when he said it. (laughs) Yeah. It's that light bulb moment of, oh, well, and for me, I mean, 
it's been recent. It's been within within 2019 that I I realized that like oh, I've always had some of this anxiety stuff. Like mm-hmm. it's just part of part of me. And you know we've talked about this too, that when you look at our family and you look at my mom, you look at my dad, you look at my grandma, you look at you look at probably your dad and your mom, and you look at some of these things. And I think some of it's 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 in our blood you know Mm -hmm. we it was always mass growing up as oh my mom's a worrier she's a worry or my grandpa my grandma yeah i'm a worry wart you know or i i worry about you guys like i'm i constantly and and you get it in some ways like Mm -hmm. like yeah you're my mom you care about me you you know all these different things or you're my grandma of course you care about me you know you're worried about all these different things but I think they've they've dealt with it differently, um, yep. and now as we've gotten, as times kind of begin to changing, change, we're changing. yeah, and just having we're words for it. We're talking about mental illnesses, and it's okay. Yeah, it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, and that's my my main thing that I tell people. I say all the time when someone's having a bad day, it is okay. Yeah, to be okay. Be, or to not be okay yeah. because you know you have at some point in your life you're not going to be okay mm-hmm. and everyone goes through it. I don't care who you are right you go through the I'm not okay there I'm just not yeah and, you know and it's okay to ask for help you, in those right. moments and that's and that's when, part of half the battle um and sometimes I think that you you know, you as a kid and having that experience as a kid may have been one of the best things for you, you know? Yeah. Um, that then it was something you could figure out and and it was somebody helped you get help. Right. Um, and as I get older and I see myself, it, it's, I have help. I have my wife that is more than willing to, you know, she's been encouraging me and urging me to to see a counselor, to see a therapist, and to talk to somebody myself. Um, but it's it's harder to recognize that you're not okay, to mm-hmm. admit that you're not okay, and then a whole nother thing, to admit that you need help. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, exactly speaking to what you're saying, it's okay to be okay, not okay and mm-hmm. and to figure those things out. You talked about how you that was the first time you were put on an antidepressant um Mm -hmm. i know that you've had a varying degrees of um you know some of the different medications that you have been on have helped and haven't helped what's been that process what's that process been like it's been like one of the hardest honestly because you're looking for you're not looking for a cure. You're looking for something to get you through the day. Mm-hmm. I always say, I just need something. Please just get me through the day. Yeah. So finding um, a medication that I'm just going to be blatantly honest. It's you have all these side effects to different medications. Yeah. And um, I was... I was put on two by my pediatrician when I was younger. Yeah. And he finally said, like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable prescribing you any more antidepressants because I don't know what, I don't know what else to do because he said, I need, you need to be, have test run and all these other ones, I don't, I don't want to prescribe you. Basically, as a pediatrician, I don't want to be liable for the side effects you may yeah. have. What so are some I of went, the side effects that that you've been told um, or experienced or whatever? What are what are some of those? Um, you know um, that are just like obviously risk of. Um, you could have the opposite effect. You have more anxiety. You have yeah. more depression. Um, risk of suicide with all of them. Mm-hmm. Risk of um, oh, there's just I mean the the side effects almost outweigh the good because 
but you take a chance. I mm-hmm. mean, you take the chance because you're, I'm willing to do anything Yeah. just to feel better. When you, you know? when you've, uh, you know, when you've been on some of these different medications, what are some of the positive effects you've experienced? Like what, how do you, how can you, would you be willing or able to kind of, um, help us understand how it's helped you and maybe yeah. the feelings in which it's helped. For sure. So I, um, my first antidepressant I was ever on kept me at like a, I never had high highs. I never had low lows. Yeah. You know what I mean? It kept you at, on a, like a, just a straight line. Yeah. Um, and that worked for a while, but as you know, the medicines eventually, I mean, your dosages, you need to up your dosage. You need to, or you might need to switch to something. Well, after I started, I think that was Zoloft. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was Zoloft. And I didn't have the, I was, I was doing really good. I really was. But then came the depression and, um, you have that first love of, you know, the love of your life. I wouldn't say that, but the first person that you really think that this you might love. And I was in high school, and um, I started to have panic attacks because we had just broke up, mm-hmm. and I started to have panic attacks that I wasn't good enough. That's why this relationship did not work out. Mm. I wasn't good enough. And um, I walked down the high school stairs, and I actually had to leave school that day because I about passed out because I couldn't eat. Yeah. And I I about passed out, and I had to leave school because I was so worked up and so anxious and so distraught that I was doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't focus at that point in time. I I don't really remember focusing on I'm a kid and I'm in high school, you know. Right. Um, I think that I was seeking that um, support, maybe that that male support that I didn't have or something like that. I don't know what I was going through. And then um, I got put on another medication to control the anxiety to help with panic attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, Started seeing a therapist, started working through that. Well, then I got back with the same same person. Um, And really, um, that was when I started having the suicidal thoughts. I remember thinking, if he breaks up with me again, I, I'm going to kill myself. Like, those were the thoughts. Yeah. And How old were you I, at this time? Do you remember? 16, 17. Okay. And plus, I have the high school pressure of not fitting in because I am way more, way too mature. <laughs> I was way too mature for my own good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I never fit in because I, I didn't do the partying. I didn't do this or I didn't do that. So I didn't fit in. Yeah. Um, you hadn't made those bonds with some of the people. Right. That maybe and had. I had focused too much on this relationship. I had focused way too much on it. I had lost friends over this and yeah, I just thought there was no coming back from it. You know, there, mm-hmm. i this guy that I had really, I really liked him. I thought he was the love of my life for real. And now looking back on it, I, I literally laugh. Because right. Because. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. <laughs> I, Kyle and I talk about this too. I literally laugh because a man should never treat you that way. Yeah. And no one, no one, not even a man. No one should treat you that way. Yeah. And just so and, that everybody knows, Kyle is your boyfriend or partner now. Yes. Right? Yes. And, we, you know, just looking back on that, I thought, how dumb would I have been to have ended my life over something 
so stupid. That's, and it's not though. It really wasn't stupid at the time. Like that was a real thing. And yeah, that was when, you know, I started to realize some things about me that I was like, I need help. This is too much to where I'm, I look at a telephone pole and I think, you know, is this it? Because I could really just, I would much rather die than live this life. Yeah. And that's when it got serious for me because I was scared of my own thoughts. So I started, I had already been in counseling and, um, I went to a, got referred to a psychiatrist and started some new medication. Yeah. And once I got this individual out of my life and I worked through the, some things on my own, I had to work on myself and not care what others thought because I wasn't like them. I had to accept the fact that I wasn't like them. And that's when I really started to work through some of my, some of my past emotions and past feelings and resentment towards different people. And I really started to focus on the bigger picture Yeah, and that was my life. My, I needed to be here. Yeah. I was made to be here and I have a reason to be here. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had, I had a friend that committed suicide and I saw the heartache Mm -hmm. that it left behind. I really saw the heartache and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. I couldn't, I didn't want to do that to, well, my sisters. Right. I couldn't do that to them. Mm -hmm. I know that that, that moment, I know we, we've talked about, or you've told the story to me and, um, you know, share as much as you want and don't share whatever you don't want to, but I know that that really did, and you kind of spoke to it, but that your friend and uh, their suicide was was really big for you. Um, yeah, because I I had thought about it myself, and you know I had never ever spoke to it. I had never told people that mm-hmm. that I had thought about that, and so you know when you're hanging out with someone and they they jokingly say like, ha ha, I'm going to, I would just kill myself. Yeah. And you think you, you know, your kids. Yeah. And so when it really happened and, and we all kind of looked back and I just was kind of, just felt a fool. You know, yeah. I just felt like I'm so dumb to not realize different things that had been going on at our school. Um, they didn't know how to handle this suicide. Yeah. Um, that the counselors didn't know how to, what to do. I mean, yeah. you had kids bawling their eyes out and no, there was no comfort. There was nothing. There was, it was so cold and it was, um, I, my I watched my friend literally just, she was just almost screaming and I could never get her voice out of my head about, about the things she was saying. And I thought to myself at that point that I had to help people. I had to help people and I, my, I needed to live. That's really, and that was my junior year of high school. Yeah. Yeah. And how much and I, how much time really passed uh, before you realized the direction of psychology and counseling? Was it pretty shortly after that? Yeah, pretty shortly after that when I saw the how uneducated our school school counselors and how uneducated our the faculty was and no you know they were you had no clue. They had no clue how to handle this situation. Yeah. They had no clue the pain and suffering that was going on. And I thought to myself, like, how can you, you're watching these children. We're children. We're, we're, we're not innocent, but we are children and 
we have the, all this life to live and you're sitting here watching us cry some of us are screaming crying yeah and you don't know what to do yeah you don't know what to do and that's when i really you know started thinking like psychology might be for me and yeah i was and then i heard you know you hear the oh you're going into psychology well what are you gonna do with that <laughs> yes and you you hear it and you're like wow right and and then you you almost you almost want to say are you ignorant because yeah. we have such a need for that yeah. this world we are changing so much and we we now we talk about mental illness mm -hmm. and well and i think that's what's so cool about you know us having this conversation um your willingness to tell your story and kind of talk about this a little bit um because you you recognize at such a young age of something that was missing and instead of the what was me it's like this is the direction you took action and i really value that and i know that our mostly your generation the millennial generation that's kind of coming up is it, it chances sneezing um <laughs> but uh really get a bad rap for this entitlement and you know it's present and it's not awesome but i really mm -hmm. i really think it's cool that you you know that you actually took action and you you did something about it and um and you're doing something about it you're you're having this conversation you're you've sought help um you know you're you're medicating the best of your ability um you know you're you're doing everything right and and it's not it's not easy like no. i don't want to i don't want it to sound like a you know it it just came easy i mean sure there were there were multiple you know days where it's harder than others i mean yeah. my and i'm Kyle, sure that that's still the case today yeah, and i know to it this is day, yeah and you know i always say like Kyle he's a godsend because <laughs> um there's been days where I was like I'm not getting out of bed today I yeah. can't yeah. I just can't do it I can't get out of bed because I am a failure I I feel as though the like I just can't yeah and he has told me get up come on we're going we're gonna do this what will make you feel better and it's it's hard for him, I know, mm -hmm. because he doesn't struggle with it. And um, yeah, I've it... had relationships in the past where they say I, I have been told that I am a psycho, or you need to get you need to get it together. Mm -hmm. And when until you truly realize that it that. It's me. This is part of me. And take it or leave it. And in the fact that someone can stand by your side knowing all the struggles you have and how hard it's going to be to be with you. Yeah. I mean, that's what truly makes... I mean, our relationship is far from perfect. And it, like I, I put on Twitter, I said, if you like relationships are hard, you are taking two completely different people. You're putting them together and seeing if it works and mm -hmm. you put trust and you have faith and yeah, relationships are hard and you know, just in and of themselves. That, yeah. <laughs> just a relationship someone, period. <laughs> having someone that has these issues and, you being able to be okay with that. Yeah. That sometimes sometimes Grace isn't going to get out of bed. And sometimes um, she's going to bawl her eyes out. Because yeah. Because she's a crier. <laughs> and just stuff like that. Boy, we get that on us, don't we, girl? <laughs> Literally. And so, you know, you got to look at things and think, you know, be thankful for the people you do have during yeah. your during your issues because mm -hmm. 
those are the people that matter and yeah. those everyone matters but those are the people that matter most to you yeah the people that show up the people mm -hmm. that whether they understand or get it or can really empathize we're, with, we're in this together yeah that's we're what in this i together. always say we're in this yep. together absolutely and i uh, take it one day at a time yeah I'm, you know, I'm currently on two different medications, and that's more than I ever, I thought I would never, I just wanted to be off of medications, because yeah. I had, I had terrible side effects with one of my medications, and I never wanted to be on them, Yeah. ever again. And, and that's understandable, and, it is. And here I am, and I, I take I do take, I take a morning pill and that's to, as an upper, that gets me out of bed basically. Yeah. And I take something at night so I can unwind because if I don't, I sit there and think about every single thing I didn't do that day or yeah. every single thing that I, I might've messed up or, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Like that's okay for me and sit, being able to, I mean, put this on a podcast and say, yeah, I'm on two antidepressants, but <laughs> yeah, I am it's okay. It is okay. It's, if that's what makes me, you know, who I am, or if that's what makes me get out of bed and be able to go work a job and get through school and help others, then it's okay. Yep. It really is. Absolutely. Grace, I know one thing that, you know, you and I have had several conversations about this, I guess, uh, since we, sat down but and talked on my way through um to florida but we something that has really been helpful for me and i i hope it's been helpful for you but i challenged us both because we both have a little bit of a negative self-talk and we've got some of that stuff going on and you've talked about it but twice a week we're going on two weeks strong now um, mm -hmm. of just challenging each other to text. I'll text you or you'll text me back or whatever. And, and we have to say one thing that we like about ourselves, And it's been good because it forces me to actually like, Oh, I got to do this. And I want to, I want to not only be there for you, but I, I know that it's important for me to take those steps and to just love myself a little bit more. And yeah, and I think that it's it's been very helpful for me because I have to sit there and I kind of have to think a little bit. I mean, yeah. but I mean, here at, we're only going on two weeks, but it's come pretty natural because there are things to love about yeah. each and every one of ourselves. Yeah, and, and I think it's going to be really interesting. I've thought about this a lot of how, you know, we, we are pulling the little low-hanging fruit things. And sometimes right. it's things that I recognize just as I like, go through my day. I'm like, oh, I'm going to text Grace that, you know, because mm -hmm. like that is a strength of mine. It's something I'm good at. It's something I like about myself. Um, but I, I think that we're going we're going to have to dig deep at some point in time. And mm -hmm. these little shallow things that, you know, sometimes are just like the low hanging fruits that are easy for us to kind of pull on, I think, right now. But I think that there's going to come a time that we're going to have to dig a little deeper and probably have a little more of a conversation at, at times. And I think that's cool. I think that's okay. But I, what I love about it is the A, it's accountability. Um, mm -hmm. And we both have some skin in the game, you know. Mm -hmm. And I really want to encourage people uh, that are listening. If if you've got some of these same things, if, if anything that we've talked about resonates with you and – Maybe you don't love yourself. Um, maybe you've got the negative self-talk going on. Find somebody. Find somebody to hold yourself accountable with. Um, reach out to reach out to me. Reach out to Crazy Face who know. You know the phone number, the email. Um, you can message me on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever you want to do. Um, but let us know. Let us know. Maybe if it's just you want to hold yourself accountable, maybe we can have a little support group. I don't know. Let's see what comes of it. But 
find somebody. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be a stranger. It can be somebody you know. Um, it doesn't have to be somebody that's going through it. It can just be a friend that understands. And um, it can be a parent. It can be whoever. It could be yourself. Maybe you just journal about it. Whatever it is, start speaking truth into yourself. Um, the challenge is twice a week. Write it down. Uh, text it. Call somebody. Um, whatever that might look like. But there's people that care. You know, Grace and I both were here. We care. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can, we can play a part in your story and play a part in finding that love within yourself. We would love to be a part of that. So, um, yeah. And we're, I'll be sharing this on my pages, my social media pages as well. So, I mean, yeah. Any of anyone, I mean, you can contact me. Um, I'm always, I feel like everyone <laughs> contacts me when, things aren't going right and i am perfectly fine with that because yeah. that's i mean that, that i get pure enjoyment I yeah mean, a little being purpose able to in talk, your life and being able to talk to someone and you know really say hey listen we're gonna get through this yeah. how can we get through this what yeah. do we do yeah and i think that that's where shane's been the best best part of, of what's happened to me here recently and um, we also got to talk about some really deep things that, you know, happened to me. And that has helped me more than anything, yeah. I think. Yeah. Is um, Just talking, being, letting go of it. And being able to talk to a family member and say, listen, I can't do it anymore. Uh -huh. Like, I can't. And I feel like... Uh, especially with my aunt Diane, like we have worked through so much because yeah, I think that a lot of things and and I every family has it. Mm -hmm. I think that you don't understand, you don't understand what they're meaning when they say something, and sometimes that might come off as hurtful. But I finally got to have a conversation with her and with Shane, they were both there, that I have never said out loud before. Yeah. And just letting her and Shane know, like, this is where I'm coming from. Yeah. And it does you know, take it or leave it, but this is what where I'm coming from. And so I think that that's where we have really connected because I've said things to my aunt Diane and Shane that I have never said before. Yeah. Um, that's what family's they were for. There that's for what, me. That's what, that's what we're here for. That's what mm -hmm. love is all about. That's what family's for. That's what friendships are for. And it's, I don't take those things lightly. Um, I don't take a conversation that we're even having today lightly. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate just the, the conversations because I think at least for myself, I, I'm an external processor. I, I like to talk shocker. Um, but I, I can't, when I hold those things in, when I, when I don't let go of them, when I don't speak them into existence, mm -hmm. it's so heavy. Um, mm -hmm. and that it just rolls in my head. It just that those scenarios and the different mm -hmm. ways it just rolls over and over and over in my head. And so, um, even our conversation, I, I've talked about it so many times, just conversations with Dana and my wife and, um, like, well, when I was talking with Grace or Grace and I were talking that, you know, that one night and, um, you know, we're doing this or whatever. And, and just as much as you're saying that it's, it's helped you in, in speaking those things that you've never talked about. Um, it was for me too. And I don't know. I, I, I think and it's that's so where huge. the therapy comes in, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it comes in. Yes. And, um, you know, I I think that if you're holding on to something, that needs to be said to someone. And I you know, I come off, I, I have this kind of rough, rough personality. I mean, I got tattoos and, you know, I drive a truck. So everyone thinks I'm <laughs> just some rough girl. Yeah. But, you know, there, I'm not, you got to get to know me. I have a tough exterior, mm -hmm. but I 
I love to love. So absolutely, you know, that's where I think um, you know. I everyone says, well, she's standoffish, or it's not that I'm standoffish. You just you got to open up. We all got to open up. And well, Grace, don't you think it, that some of that comes just even in our conversation of. Um, like you said, you're, we haven't got into it too much, but there's been a lot of things throughout your life where people haven't been there, um, right. that needed and, um, to be and should have been. And, um, I think that when you see those things and then you wonder why people aren't so open to just let people into their life, um, right. Why? Why and would you? Where, why shouldn't you be standoffish? I, and why I try sh- to explain. You know, I don't need to explain myself, but you gotta understand that. I don't want to say that I grew up in chaos, but I kind of grew up in chaos. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot going on at one time, mm-hmm. and I, I almost felt like I was in the middle of it. And then I was, I was kind of talked about like she's young, she won't understand. Like I heard that so many times. Like she's young, she won't remember. She's young, she won't understand. Yeah. And those were the some of the most crucial times. I mean, you're growing so much. I, that was my, I was in first grade, and you your children really grow a lot. Yeah. During that time and up through high school and. I don't think people, you know, I love my family. I truly do. But I don't think you understand that when I I almost felt like I was taught to be seen and not heard. Mm. You know what I mean? And sure. like not express how I was feeling because there's bigger problems. We got bigger problems, you know? Yeah. And so I don't think that. In, I talked a, a lot about how I was feeling or in, you know, I, I think that growing up in chaos and kind of having all this stuff happen all at once. And I was growing. I mean, I, yeah. I was developmental growing time of your I, life. I needed that. I needed, I needed the skills and I needed be, to be taught certain things. And you just like things haven't always, I mean, my, my relationship with my mom hasn't always been a hundred percent. And I think we, we've worked through a lot of it now and I love her to death. She, she's yeah. my mom and, you know, and my relationship with aunt Diane hasn't always been. And I, I think I built up a lot of resentment and once yeah. I could finally talk to um, these people and say, listen, this is where I'm coming from. And, this is what I know because of what I've seen. And this is how I feel about you because of how I've been treated. Yeah. And after having those conversations, I finally began to realize that I was holding resentment. And I think that the key to letting that go and to building new relationships was to just talk. It's okay to just, you know, talk about it. Yeah. Talk to each other and say, listen, this happened and I felt like you kind of left me behind, you know, Mm -hmm. I, and that's why I'm so grateful because I have my sisters who I, I do feel like I can talk to them, you know, and they're really, they've been the core, the centerpiece of me. And I have traits from both Jesse and Jackie Mm -hmm. and I, I value them so much. Yeah. I've and that's why I, I've got a nephew and I just like that. He is the love of my life, honestly. Like mm-hmm. and him and I'm gonna have a niece and yeah. I love them unconditionally. I mean, it's just you never you don't know what it's. I loved my sisters unconditionally, and now I have these two little ones who look, they're gonna look up to every single thing you do and. Mm-hmm you really think about the unconditional love and how you want them to, you want them to feel that love and you want to have those connections and life is too short to not have those connections. And 
that's where I, I look back at my childhood and I, I, and then I see these kids and I think I will, I gotta be there. There's no way. Yeah. I, these moments are too precious. Yeah. I, I know we had a conversation too. Um, and I think it would be maybe your perspective or just to have this conversation. I know you've thought about just with the mental health issues that you're going through and um, mm-hmm. have experienced in the the question about kids um, and passing, you know, some of our things, our mental health issues on. Um, I know that that's been a question of yours. Do you mind speaking to that at all? Yeah. So um, my boyfriend and I, we've talked about kids all- whenever we get married and stuff and you think you talk about the names and yeah my biggest fear was um passing my mental illness or there's mental illness on his side of the family as well and I just I always get scared like we we talk about it and I always say, Kyle, I'm just so scared because I would never want to put another individual through these mental illness problems that I have had. And there's no cure. There's no, there's no cure. Yeah. Is what I always say. And it's, he, you know, Kyle is just a go with the flow kind of guy. So he always says, it'll be fine. You know, what it, I promise you they'll be fine. Yeah. And that's always his response. So yeah, <laughs> it'll always be fine. We'll always figure it out. Yeah. And you will. And, and for me, it's just a, it's a really raw thing because I, I just would never wish this, wish this mental illness, the mental illness problems, the mental illness stigma on another individual. Because yeah. the moment, I mean, the moment I say I have anxiety, well, then I'm, I have issues, you know? Right. And I think that we're, we're coming a, a long way with that mm-hmm. and trying to get away from that stigma. But I mean, that's your child. And, um, I yeah. just don't know if I, I always get scared. Like, could I live with myself if, if something like my child had something wrong or my child, and yet these are, I think these are thoughts that a lot of parents have in general or soon to be parents, but mine particularly was the mental illness. Yeah. And that's my biggest fear. Yeah. And I don't think that there's any, obviously there's no solving it or there's no one knows. I mean, you, yeah. you don't know, but yeah. I think that providing the, family support and the love we can we can do this you know we can Mm -hmm. i think that we can fight through the mental illness and i think that our kids will not i don't my biggest thing is i don't want to show them like i want them to know about mental illness and stuff i just don't want them to learn these behaviors from me that I'm constantly worried or you constantly need to worry about things. And so I think that that's essential where I have a lot of growing to do and a lot of thinking to do. And before I do have children. Yeah. And I think that it'll come with age, especially I, you know, only 19, but you're a smart, you're a very smart woman. And when that time comes, you and and Kyle or whoever you know that you decide to have children with, you guys will be able to figure that out and make yeah. those decisions in the best way. And and at the end of the day, Grace, if you have kids, we're all going to be super excited for you. And if you choose yeah. not to, I know at least for myself, I'm going to respect you just as much um, mm-hmm. for not. And and that's a choice that you get to make, you know and. And for everyone else out there that maybe is, maybe you've thought about it, maybe you're having similar thoughts, or maybe you have kids and you have gone through some similar things and you're worried about those things, you're going to figure it out. Um, Yeah, and I actually watched an episode, um, I watched Teen Mom religiously because that that was a thing when I was like 
I mean, I watched that since I was in elementary because my sisters watched 16 and Pregnant. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and um, one of the children, they're now 10, is having panic attacks and they think it's anxiety. Well, her yeah. mom has anxiety. Yeah. And I sobbed. I mean, I just yeah. sobbed because I thought about all the struggles that child is going through going to possibly have to go through yeah and you know it's not certain that you're it's not certain that my kid will have anxiety because i have anxiety but it's a possibility you know and for sure it's something to think about when you do go to think about having kids and where i i mean i'm 19 but i am getting to the age where i mean a lot of people my age are having kids yeah and you think about it and yeah, you're you having know, that conversation, just, and reg- mm-hmm. it doesn't. Regardless of the fact that you're 19, you're you're talking about it, and I think that it's mm-hmm. important. You're having that conversation now, and um, it it's why is it something you're not allowed to talk about just because you're 19? Right. Um, I think it's important. It doesn't mean that you want to have kids tomorrow or. Um, or next year, maybe you do, and maybe you don't. I don't know. But regardless, it's not the point. The point is, is I, I think it's important to talk about. It. I think you're you're a very smart woman, and you're having these conversations with the man that you love and someone you care about. And I think that that's really key. And not shutting him out, but allowing him to be a part of that conversation, I think is is really cool. Right, and I think that that's where our key, just talking. You know, yeah. every talk things out. Um, I know when things start to get bad, I I close off, I shut down. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that talking, talking and working things out, speak it, be about it. You know, mm-hmm. talk, and that's where you find your solutions. I most of the time I find my solutions after I, I talk it out. I yeah. sit there and I talk it out. And I think that that's where our, our therapy and our counseling comes in. Yep. Yep. Well, Grace, I have really enjoyed this conversation. I think it's been great. Um, I think we'll Thanks wrap. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I think we'll wrap things up here. Um, I know you've kind of, you've said it throughout, you said it in the beginning, um, but I want to give you an opportunity to just speak to the people that maybe are going through similar things that you are. Um, what advice do you have? What, what would you want them to know? What would you, what would you want to hear if you were just starting out in this world of mental health? Um, and what would you want to hear? What would you want people to know? I I think the biggest thing is you're not alone. You know, there are people you can talk to. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to Shane. You can reach out to your best friend. And there are ways out. We will find a way out. And, you know, there is someone, someone that loves you, um, I think that that was the biggest thing for me was knowing that I was someone loved me yeah. and um, someone cared about me yep. and that you're not, there's nothing wrong with you. Yep. There's not a single thing wrong with you. You are who you are and you can't help that. Um, and it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. That's my biggest thing. I always say is it's okay to have a bad day. Everyone has a bad day. Yeah. And it's a, you might have a bad week, <laughs> but let's yeah. try to have a good week next yeah. week, you know? Yep. And so those are the key things. Like you're loved and you always have someone to talk to. But whether you watch this podcast or, you know, you see it on our social media pages or whatever, you can reach out to any, either one of us, you know, we're here and, um, follow my journey, trying to be counselor, you know, we'll see where, see where it takes me and just know that we're here and you're loved. 
Yeah, absolutely. You really are. Absolutely. Grace, I love you. Love you too. You are, um, you know, I, I told you this before, but you're enough just as you are. And mm-hmm. my heart feels very full right now. So thank you very much. Thanks for being vulnerable. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, let us know if you're listening. Please let us know, um, you know, if, if this story resonates with you at all or reach out to us. Let us know. Uh, start a discussion and let's let's talk about it but thank you grace i love you very yep. much and love you too i am so grateful to have you on the podcast everybody out there i love you as well like i said reach out to us let us know um, how this story how mental health maybe impacts you uh, in your day-to-day life again love you guys take it easy peace <laughs>